A very warm welcome to the virtual summit on the recovery from the pandemic, challenges faced by the MSMEs and the role of chemical industry. On behalf of Sabic and ET Energy World, I thank all our esteemed speakers as well as our viewers joining in from across India. The COVID-19 pandemic created unparalleled economic interruption in India's recent history. While the impact was felt across all sectors, the micro, small and medium enterprises have been among the most impacted. Led by Sabic, today's discussion will feature chemical industry, MSME leaders, and Apex Export Council in a wide-ranging dialogue into the challenges, opportunities, and collaboration required to help recover MSMEs within the chemical sector. The hashtag for this event is Championing India, and we would like our viewers today to share your key takeaways from this event on social media platforms using the hashtag Championing India. Let more people gain access to the insights and content shared by our eminent speakers from the industry. On that note, let's begin the virtual summit with an opening address from Mr. Rajendra Gogri, CMG RT Industries and co-chairman, FICCI National Chemical Committee. Welcome, Mr. Gogri. In India, the micro, small and medium enterprise have been contributing immensely to the development and expansion of entrepreneurial spirit through business innovations and resilience. Over the last five decades, it has emerged as a vibrant and highly dynamic sector of the Indian economy. The sector contributes significantly in the area of economic and social development by nurturing business opportunities and generating large-scale employment at a comparatively lower capital cost. The MSMEs are spreading their presence across various sectors of the economy, producing a varied range of products and services to meet the domestic as well as global demands. The sector is the second largest employment creator after the agricultural sector, employing almost 100 million people. It contributes 30% of the GDP and accounts for 48% of export. As we all know, since the beginning of the year 2020, the world is facing once in a century crisis due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The crisis has severely affected the economic activities and as a result, it impacted the livelihoods of billions of people. The pandemic had a disastrous impact on almost all the sectors of the Indian economy, but the MSME sector was one of the worst hit. Most of the business activities of MSMEs came to a standstill due to prolonged national-wide lockdown and containment measures. Lack of access to funds, non-availability of credit facilities, delayed payments, business losses, etc and also non-availability of the workforce due to mobility restriction labor problems. The majority of micro and small enterprises operate in the area of agriculture and food sector, and medium-sized enterprises mostly operating in the automobile, pharma, textile, and chemical sector. The chemical and petrochemical industry is highly dominated by MSME players. With a large number of products in the chemical industry value chain, there is a lot of interdependence in the ecosystem of the small, medium, and large producers. The MSME therefore play a crucial role in maintaining a robust value chain from raw material supply to the production of finished goods. The chemical industry also faced an early sharp decline during the initial period of lockdown. However, with constant efforts of industry players and proactive measures such as announcing economic stimulus package, allowing essential products uh, manufacturing during the nationwide lockdown and launching the vaccination drive by the government of India, has the sector progressed towards the v shaped recovery. The index of industrial production for chemical manufacturing has also returned to pre-COVID levels and is expected to grow at a CAGR of about 9% by FI25. The Indian chemical industry has a triple growth drivers of increasing domestic demand room for import substitution and expanding export opportunities. The China plus one sourcing strategy of global players is converting the MSMEs into very vital contributor to the sector. For the recovery of the MSMEs, the government has taken a series of steps such as announcing stimulus package of Rs. 3 lakh crores collateral free automatic loans for business, including MSMEs, under the emergency credit line guarantee scheme, and Rs. 20,000 crores subordinate debt for stressed MSMEs, and Rs. 50,000 crores equity infusion through MSME fund of funds revised definition of MSME, e-market linkage, income tax return, and ease of doing of business. Even though these schemes will be helpful, the government should immediately come up with the additional aid for quick revival of the MSME sector. 
As per Parliamentary Standing Committee, the stimulus package announced by government for the economic revival is inadequate. This is because the adopted measures look more of a loan offering and long-term measures rather than improving the cash flow to generate demand as a immediate uh, relief. And to recover from the pandemic fallout, the government should come up with a larger economic package aiming at increasing demand, investment, exports, and employment generation to help the economy and also MSMEs. Small enterprises are de dependent on regular cash flow to stay afloat, unlike large and medium enterprises. Hence, it is foremost for the government to extend adequate liquidity support so as to help their businesses to run and generate job opportunities for the workforce. The government should conduct a detailed study to assess the actual impact of the pandemic on the MSME sector and then should come up with a revival plan. Other than the financial export to MSMEs, the government needs to improve its infrastructure by upgrading existing ports, warehouses, quality testing and certification centers so that MSMEs can take benefit of such infrastructure and thereby can produce products at a very low cost. India also has a strong position in the international trading of chemicals and ranks 9th in exports and 6th in imports at a global level, excluding pharmaceutical. The current per capita consumption of chemical products in India is about one tenth of the world average. India is indicating that the demand potential is yet to be realized. All these indicate a positive outlook for MSMEs in the chemical industry. The large company generally has dedicated plants for a single line of products, but the smaller players have fungible plants capable of producing a wide range of products, for which environment regulations should really permit product uh, mix changes to enhance their viability and competitiveness by the ever-changing export markets. Enhanced rates of duty drawback on exports will encourage investment and reduce dependence on importing raw materials under advanced license with related inventory storage and the financing cost. Government should also encourage the PSUs and large companies to pay the MSME with a short 30-day period to help with their liquidity and minimize working capital need, which is difficult to procure for the MSMEs. Chemical sector also requires continuous R&D and innovation to stay competitive in existing products and develop new ones. Therefore, the government of India should incentivize R&D and innovation as well. For technology advancement, the amended technology upgradation fund scheme, which facilitates improvement in investment, productivity, quality and exports in the textile industry through technology upgrades, can be replicated in the chemical sector as well. Sustainability is a key factor for operating in the chemical sector. So matters of safety, health and environment need to be kept in focus. An institution for process safety to support new practices and technologies an environment upgradation fund to minimize environmental impact with common treatment facilities are also of critical importance. Skill development of mid-level technical person is another urgent need to support the growth aspiration of the industry. All this will help MSMEs to upgrade their existing processes to stay competitive in the global market. Primarily, I would say to access the unusual of the feedstock at a low cost is very important to become competitive in the global market. Therefore, the industry in association with the government should strategize feedstock allocation plan so that each chemical cluster part should get continued supply of raw materials. With this, I conclude and wish you all a very fruitful discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gogri, for articulating the challenges faced by the MSMEs and setting the context for the discussion aptly. To all our viewers today, you can ask your questions by writing into the chat box. Our subject matter experts would love to answer your questions. I also encourage you to use the hashtag Championing India and continue sharing key takeaways from the session. Let us ensure more and more people are able to benefit from the insight speakers share today. I now invite Mr. Sai Krishna, Assistant Vice President and Sector Head ICRA to share industry insights through his presentation on the challenges around MSMEs and the chemical industry. Welcome, Mr. Krishna. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session on uh, building resilience in MSMEs to aid the Indian chemical industry. I would like to thank SABIC and Economic Times also for providing me this opportunity to talk on the subject. So here we will be discussing about the chemical and plastic sector and the importance of MSME in the segment, the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the sector, the future growth drivers and challenges, 
and steps to be taken by the government and industry to overcome the challenges and build resilience in the MSME sector so that the opportunities can be leveraged. To give an overview of the sector, the chemical sector is estimated to be $178 billion and is expected to grow to $300 billion by 2025 as per the Department of Chemicals and Petrochemicals. While as per APMA, the plastic industry is estimated to be around 2.25 lakh crore. Both the industries are major contributor to domestic economy and employ close to 6 million people. India is a net importer in several key chemical segments, although in the specialty chemical segment, it is a net exporter. In both the chemical and the plastic industry, the MSMEs are major players. MSME sector is estimated to account for 25 to 30 percent of the overall domestic chemical segment. And the presence is high in case of product segments where scale is not a major criteria and R&D requirement is lower. However, they also have presence in niche chemical specialty segments. MSMEs are engaged in manufacturing of low value added products. They do job work for larger players. They also undertake processing like purification, blending, etc. and have presence across the value chain. In the plastic segment, around 85 to 90% of the polymer processing sector is with the MSME segment. If you look at the contribution of the MSME segment, it is skewed towards the low value added products where uh, the margins are lower. Customers are mainly in the informal sector or domestic customers. And the R&D requirement and complex technology requirement is low and the competition is high. However, in the niche specialty chemical segments where MSME has presence, the margins are relatively better. Customers are large domestic players and MNCs. And there's a relatively large uh, R&D requirement and the competition intensity is lower. If you look at the COVID-19 impact on the chemical and plastic sector, uh, in March 2020, when the impact of COVID-19 pandemic started playing out, there was a sharp contraction in production in both chemical and plastic sector due to the containment measures and the demand being impacted. However, after April 2020, there was gradual recovery and by H2 of FI 2021, the demand had started recovering. During the second wave, while there was some impact, it was much lower compared to the first wave. If we compare the two waves on various parameters, during the first wave, uh, the production was impacted by the labor migration, specifically during Q1 FI 2021 and part of Q2 FI 2021. However, during the second wave, uh, the industry was much better prepared due to the use of local labor, providing accommodation, et cetera, which had mitigated the impact. The labor migration issue was also much lower compared to the first wave. On the logistics front, during the first wave, due to the stringent containment measures, production and supply was adversely impacted. However, the impact was much less severe in the second wave. On the demand front, both the domestic and export demand was impacted during the peak of first wave. However, in the second wave, while there was some impact on the domestic demand, the export demand remained relatively much better. On the working capital cycle front, the collection period was stretched uh, due to the impact of pandemic across the supply chain during the first wave. However, the impact was much less severe in the second wave. The liquidity again, because of the stretch collection period and impact of operations was impacted and there was some pressure built up during H1 of FI 2021. However, the relief measures provided from RBI mitigated the impact. During the second wave, the impact on liquidity was much less. And again, uh, due to the relief measures, there was support provided. So the MSME sector was also with, within the chemical and the plastic sector was also impacted by the lockdown, labor migration, logistics issues, and liquidity stretch. However, the impact was mitigated by the relief measures uh, like the moratorium and resolution provide, uh, support provided, as well as liquidity support through ECLGS scheme, et cetera. Further, with the demand recovery in the chemical sector, the impact was mitigated. If we look at both the chemical and plastic sector are poised for, for multi-year growth over the next few years. And the key growth drivers are both for the domestic as well as export demand. For the chemical sector, the domestic growth will be driven by the growing economy. With the expected growth in uh, economy, the domestic consumption of various chemical sectors are expected to grow. Also, the changes in consumption pattern with the growth in per capita income will also drive domestic growth, more preference for premium products and adoption of global production by the global uh, production measures by the industry, which will uh, result in improved demand. Further, the government push for increased domestic production and the supporting measures that they have taken will also help. On the export front, increased diversification under the China plus one strategy wherein the global majors are looking at supply chain diversification due to the disruptions witnessed in the last few years, making them more aware about the concentration risk. 
and India is expected to benefit from the same. The cost arbitrage, which continues due to the low cost production process and lower labor cost, the availability of skilled labor in India and favorable IPR regime, which is expected to help in sectors like agrochemicals and pharma, where uh, the domestic industry also has uh, established track record. And this will help in further increase in tramps business uh, for these sectors. The plastic industry is also expected to witness demand growth due to similar factors and will be driven by increased demand for packaging, both rigid and flexible packaging. Demand from the infrastructure sector for increase uh, for various pipes, plastic sheets, etc. Agricultural equipments for micro irrigation, healthcare equipments, auto sector, consumer durables, etc. However, there are several key challenges which needs to be addressed so that the industry can leverage these opportunities. So some of these challenges are the high import dependence on feedstock, competition and impact of uh, free trade agreements, low R&D and technology adoption, lack of scale in several subsegments, logistics related constraints and environmental risks. There are also challenges specific to MSMEs, which include the access to funding, risk of technology obsolescence, manpower skilling. There are constraints related to environmental regulation compliance. Since environmental compliance uh, for MSME sector is a major constraint since this restricts their ability to move up the value chain or gain share in the export market, especially in certain segments like the dyes and pigments, which has high effluent treatment requirement. Supply chain inefficiencies. The MSME segment also faces challenges of supply chain inefficiencies, which impacts the growth in the sector. Further, the marketing setup for smaller players are inadequate and limit their ability to grow. There, are, there is lack of awareness about IPR issues. Focus on the intellectual property right is critical to move up the value chain and become part of global supply chain. However, the MSME segment is constrained by the lack of awareness about these issues. And then there are regulatory issues wherein there are several regulations relating to the MSME sector. However, there is lack of synchronization among different agencies on interpretation of regulation, which impacts the ability of MSME players to effectively benefit from various government support measures. However, there are several government measures which has been taken both for COVID-19 and in general to support the chemical sector, chemical and plastic sector in recent period, which is expected to aid the industry. Some of these are the COVID-19 relief measures by RBI, which includes during the first wave, the moratorium and restructuring options provided and also the emergency credit line guarantee scheme to provide collateral free loans, which provided liquidity support. There was a rationalization of duty structure on some of the key feedstock like NAFTA and some of the anomalies under the FTA and other trade uh, were also addressed and several trade protection measures in the form of anti-dumping duty on several key feedstock and petrochemicals was provided. And these are expected to aid uh, in both availability of feedstock and also result in increased uh, capacity in these feedstock, which will reduce the import dependence going forward. Further, there were some non-tariff barriers also in the form of uh, mandatory BIS standards, etc. And uh, th these are also expected to mitigate the impact of competition. Also, IPR protection measures uh, in terms of IPR reg regulations and schemes, etc. were introduced. Then there is public procurement policy, which as a part of the Make in India initiative, the Department of Chemicals and Petrochemical had notified all procuring entities to comply with the local content criteria for a set of chemicals, petrochemicals and agrochemicals, irrespective of the purchase value. However, at present, they are applicable to only few chemicals, but the same is expected to grow going forward. There are various export promotion schemes, performance links incentive was also introduced for APIs, and it is expected that it might be introduced for some of the other chemical segments also going forward. Then cluster-based development under the PCPIR and plastic park scheme. These cluster-based development should support smaller companies by having common infrastructure for waste management, effluent treatment, warehouses, etc. And central government will do part funding for some of these projects, which should be favorable for the sector. Also, the government has come out with the draft chemical management and safety rules. These provide for notification, registration, and restrictions on prohibitions, etc. for and uh, requirements related to labeling, etc. for packaging, uh, which should help the sector in improving their export presence. If you look at the scheme specifically for the MSME sector, there were schemes under the Atmanirbhar Bharat, wherein uh, 20,000 crore uh, subordinate debt scheme for stressed MSMEs was there. Credit guarantee scheme for subordinate debt was introduced. 
fund of funds for msme scheme which is expected to infuse around 50000 crore for msme as equity and also uh, guidelines for self reliant india fund was introduced apart from these the ministry of msme runs numerous schemes targeted at providing credit and financial assistance skill development training infrastructure development marketing assistance technology and quality upgradation and other services for msmes across the country apart from the government measures that we have discussed there are various steps which the industry has already taken or should take to leverage the opportunities and also to support the msme sector so these include increased r&d spend companies which consistently invest in r&d have been able to move up the value chain and develop sustained advantage technology adoption through tie ups acquisition and consolidation apart from the r&d spend technology adoption can also be done through tie up with global players consolidation with domestic or mncs or acquisition of smaller companies with complementary technology the customer and product diversification in order to scale up and reduce risk companies which over time manage to diversify the customer base end users and also geographies are able to have sustained growth in meaningful market share cost savings through efficiency measure while process improvement with process improvement investment in digital technology and automation and other measures which will aid in cost saving and improved efficiencies companies have also gone for vertical integration through greenfield projects or through acquisition which provide long term cost advantages on the environmental sustainability front companies which aim to increase the global footprint in the export market need to ensure all environmental and sustainability related regulations are complied and if they have a focused and proactive policy on the same it will be a source of advantage further stakeholder engagement through associations is extremely necessary there are already several associations for chemical sector and specific sub segments which engage with various stakeholders and government for various policy measures like regulations trade protection measures incentives etc it is crucial for the association to be regularly engaged with government bodies to ensure that sector level challenges are adequately highlighted and feedback is given on adequacy of government support measures so that they can be fine tuned for the msme sector in order to make them more resilient it is necessary for greater collaboration between the larger players in the industry and the msme segment it will also be imperative for larger uh, domestic and global players to uh, support the industry msme sector uh, and uh, integrate them as part of the domestic and global value chain some of the key areas of collaboration is with regards to technology upgradation it and digitization which will which will be very crucial for the msme sector going forward and the larger players can provide much uh, better uh, help in this segment compliance with global standards and regulations on environmental social and governance issue including the labor issues environmental compliance issues health and safety measures providing manpower training collaborating on r and d and ensuring timely payment so that uh, the companies are not stretched on the working capital front with the expected growth in demand the indian chemical and plastic sector should benefit uh, including the msme sector and although icra expects that in the medium to long term the share of msme segment in the chemical sector may witness some moderation mainly because of the scaling up of companies increasing consolidation and the companies moving up the value chain due to which some of the current msmes might uh, because of the growth in scale etc there might be some moderation in this uh, share of msme in the sector but it will be a major contributor to the growth in both uh, chemical and the plastic sector thank you thank you mr krishna for sharing the precise and insightful presentation for the benefit of our viewers the detailed industry report titled building resilience in msmes to strengthen the indian chemical industry can be downloaded from the website special thanks to icra and sabik for making this virtual summit an excellent source of learning for all in the industry on that note it's time to proceed to a round table discussion while you keep the engagement going on the social media using the hashtag championing india i now take the opportunity to invite mr janardhanan ramanujalu vice president and regional head south asia australia and new zealand at sabik to lead the dialogue with our eminent chemical industry MSME leaders and industry associations on the topic recovery from the pandemic. Welcome, Mr. Janardhanan.
Good morning, all of you, and welcome to this uh, panel uh, discussion today on building resilience in the MSME sector within the chemical industry to strengthen it further. Uh, a very distinguished panel of uh, speakers today. I'm personally proud and thankful to all of them to participate from the chemical industry, from various parts of the chemical industry. And that's very, very complimenting uh, for anybody in our uh, audience uh, to find some takeaways at the end of this session. Uh, my uh, uh, suggestion is that we would go around a bunch of major topics which uh, are important to MSMEs. Please feel free to add to any opinion expressed by anybody because this we want it to be an enriching session to, to all, all of us as well as our audience. And uh, may I ask for a quick round of introductions uh, so that the audience will, will be get familiar with you. Uh, can I start with Mr. Makar, please, on the screen first? Good morning to everybody, and it's a pleasure to be on the panel. Uh, I'll just introduce myself quickly. I'm Managing Director, Chairman of Oriental Rubber Industries, uh, manufacturing industrial rubber products, mainly supplying to the infrastructure like mining. We're more than 70 years old. We are basically a family-driven company. And we are probably a multinational in our field in terms we have operations in South Africa and in India. And, and I'm also currently presiding as the president of the ARI, which represents more than 1,200 SMEs and MSMEs in the rubber industry, very closely linked to the topic today and to the panel today. So it's very uh, opportunity for me to also convey and get guidance to the association members from all, all the lovely panelists here. I wish you all a lovely day. Yeah, good morning, Aliyar. Good morning, uh, friends. Uh, I am Arvind Goenka. I am uh, representing here as Chairman Plastics Export Promotion Council, which is normally called Plex Council. This is a government-sponsored body which is engaged in the promotion of exports of plastics from India. Uh, on, on the business front, I am uh, Managing Director of RMG Polyvinyl India Limited. We are manufacturing PVC floor coverings, which goes for the building and testing. And I'm very happy to be a part of this panel and to uh, you know, answer any question which Mr. JR puts to me. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, I'm Ravi Chandran. Uh, I'm currently the Executive Vice President and uh, Deputy Chief Rating Officer in Ikra Limited. Uh, for those of you who are not aware about ICRA, ICRA is a credit trading agency. Uh, we rate a uh, whole lot of companies in India. You know, uh, credit trading is a comment on the debt servicing ability of any company. So based on the ratings, uh, you, know, you know, fund managers and uh, bankers decide to, you know, lend or invest in the, you know, uh, company. Uh, that's on the, uh, you know, the job part of it. But otherwise, I'm a chemical engineer by qualification and also an MBA. I started my career as a chem you know, chemical engineer in a process plan, then moved on to financial services. In financial services, I, you know, interestingly, uh, while I've looked at a whole lot of companies in India, uh, within chemical and petrochemicals, uh, I had the chance to look at the who's who of uh, Indian chemical industry, all the way from the mighty Reliance Industries to a tiny SME. So I have, I have had the benefit of uh, looking at the uh, Indian chemical industry from a techno-commercial point of view. Uh, I have seen them over the last two, two and a half decades. So that has been my, uh, you know, uh, association with the chemical industry. So that's about that. And uh, we're excited to be part of, uh, uh, you know, ET Energy World and Sabik, you know, uh, through this uh, panel discussion. Thank you. Ashi, you can introduce yourself, please. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm very much thankful for inviting me for this uh, valuable and very important session. I am in this chemical industry last 41 years. So I have served in various capacity. Currently I'm associated with the Godavari Biorefineries Limited, which is a predominantly, uh, predominantly sugar and sugar based ethanol, ethanol based chemicals. We are the pioneer industry in the India. We started our industry in 1938. We make derivative and chemicals from ethanol which is a uh, bio refineries and bio products, which is currently it is going getting an importance today. Because in 30 years ago, we were telling that we are making a bio and green products that nobody were happy, nobody were buying, buy, trying to buy. But today we are the one of the recognized industry in worldwide. 
and we make various organic chemicals which are uh, basic inputs for the pharma and uh, coating industries. I am currently a chairman of Chemexil. Chemexil is uh, one of the premium uh, EPC uh, set up by government of uh, commerce ministry. So I am, we are holding the, uh, our large as well as the MSME sectors in chemical industries. So I'm proud to be part of this your day. Thank you. Can I request uh, Rohit, Mr. Rohit Kanuga to introduce himself quickly? Thank you, Mr. Janardhan, uh, for this uh, opportunity uh, to be part of this esteemed panel. And a very good morning <laughs> to all the uh, panelists uh, on this session today. Uh, I'm Rohit Kanuga from Rukma Plastics. Uh, and uh, we are basically into polymer solutions uh, for the polymer raw material solutions for the industries such as automotive infrastructure, packaging, uh, infrastructure, packaging, medical, etc. And we just don't provide the raw material solutions. We also go a step ahead and provide a lot of technical solutions to our clients. And um, I'm also uh, a part of the All India Plastic Manufacturer Association, where I serve as one of the committee members. Once again, thanks again for having me and look forward to a very engaging discussion. Thank you. Can I request Mr. Samir? Hello, JR sir and everyone here. First of all, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this esteemed panel. Today, I know I will myself learn a lot of things from this discussion. Uh, as far as uh, our company is concerned, we are from the automotive sector serving uh, for last three decades various OEMs through tier one companies. And we are mainly dealing in plastic and sheet metal components. And uh, we are, I'm looking forward to this, this discussion in a very fruitful manner. Yeah. May I request Mr. Raju Desai also to introduce himself quickly. Good morning, Mr. Janadan. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me as a panelist in this uh, session today. My name is Raju Desai, as I said, and I'm associated with uh, All India Plastics and board member of Plastic India Foundation. Uh, I am heading the group called Juti Plastic Works Private Limited, where we are engaging in manufacturing of uh, products uh, by injection molding, extrusion, compounding, and composite molding. Uh, we are in the business from last 60 years. And I'll be happy to know as well as share my viewpoints uh, on this panel today. Thank you. Can I ask Mr. Dugal sir to introduce himself and we have two more people. Good morning and uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, I am representing a company that is over four decades old in the plastic injection molding business. This is uh, RR Technoplast. We have two plants, one in Faridabad, one in Manasa. Primarily, uh, we, uh, we do work for the automobile industry. But uh, due to the vagaries in the last couple of years going up and down of the demand, uh, we have now consciously started moving uh, towards white goods. And eventually, we do plan to go into you know, uh, other, other, other products as well. So thank you once again for having me. Thank you, Dugal, sir. Mr. Nandan Agarwal. Fellow panelists, and it's indeed uh, you know, a pleasure uh, to be amongst this you know, August company. Um, so uh, I am the managing director of NPL Blue Sky Automotive. Uh, we manufacture a product which is called diesel exhaust fluid or ADLU. And uh, this is used to reduce the, uh, uh, the uh, NOx emissions from uh, the exhaust gases you know, coming out of the diesel engines. Um, uh, urea is a very key uh, raw material for the diesel exhaust fluid, and so we import urea from various parts of the world. We are also in the petroleum industry. Uh, we manufacture uh, lubricating oils for automotive and industrial applications, and also service the plastics industry uh, by supplying polyethylene and polypropylene. So um, thank you very much, uh, and look forward to an interesting discussion today. Thank you, Mr. Mukesh Biani. So. I think with that, with him, I cover everybody. So, Biani, please. Thanks for making the part of this panel discussion. I'm Mukesh Biani, Director of Cosmo Electro Industries Private Limited. We are into manufacturing of electrical products with the brand name of Colors, K O L O R S. And we are located in different parts of India, our manufacturing units. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, thank you very much for this uh, introduction. Very rich, experienced people in this panel. And 
also young entrepreneurs is a great combination uh, let me go into the session and uh, i will be moderating through and through you can interrupt me anytime you want you can raise your hand if you would like to add a point to anybody else's view uh, my first question actually goes to mr ravichandran of ikra who made this uh, uh, fabulous study on the msmes in the chemical sector in fact it was an eye opener for me some of those numbers were not in my range before so it's quite impressive and uh, to mr ravichandran what in your opinion are some of the major challenges the msmes within the chemical sector and the polymer sector are Uh, especially in view of this prolonged uh, pandemic are facing and uh, this will help us you know like to put the context to the current day so i, I leave it open for you mr rajendra i would think uh, you know the msmes uh, in the chemical space have been facing uh, four or five challenges um, when the covid struck uh, you know as sometime in february march uh, 2020 uh, it caught many uh, you know uh, you know companies uh, unawares Uh, so uh, there was this lockdown and immediately demand also slumped and uh, they are facing huge liquidity you know related issues and uh, uh, many of the customers were also going through financial stress and working capital cycle was getting elongated so funding was a very big challenge for msmes uh, in the first quarter of the previous financial year that is april to you know and june to the duty but by the time government uh, realized the uh, uh, fact that not only msmes even bigger companies uh, you know uh, also were all, were also going through financial stress and it was very important uh, you know for them to uh, pump, pump prime the economy so various fiscal measures and monetary measures were put in place uh, through that uh, liquidity uh, was infused into the system and also uh, there was this loan loan moratorium which was given for almost 6 months that gave a big breather to many of the companies Uh, and even after that also uh, you know the companies could go for one time restructuring uh, and also uh, uh, rbi uh, through banking system introduced this eclgs funding wherein uh, up to 20% of the existing you know uh, fund based facilities uh, they were getting additional uh, uh, facilities which could be repaid over four to five years so because of all these extraordinary measures from the government side uh, you know the industry was able to limp back to normalcy so by that time you know uh, lockdown uh, was gradually lifted and demand environment also uh, you know improved gradually so depending on what kind of customers what kind of industries you know you are dealing with uh, we could see different kinds of recovery for msmes that was on the funding side otherwise uh, supply chain was another issue you know that, that we could you know uh, clearly observe uh, you know since many of these companies uh, were relying on imported sources you know there was this time when uh, uh, you know availability of raw material uh, you know from china was impacted in a big way so supply chain efficiencies have been impacting you know the industry uh, for quite some time uh, while some companies have come out of that but still uh, i believe uh, uh, flate we're also looking at uh, container shortage and uh, so on so forth uh, the shipping free trade has gone up substantially and availability of raw material is also an issue for some of the Uh, uh, companies so while funding has come back to normalcy and uh, demand environment also has come back to normalcy uh, still you know supply chain is one issue uh, on the labor side uh, we you know we observed uh, you know big uh, you know constraints especially in the uh, first quarter of previous year you know we saw migration of labor to rural areas uh, that also impacted the labor intensive part of msc business Uh, but in the second wave we see a big change uh, you know the labor availability has not been an issue Uh, because of the uh, extraordinary measures taken by various msmes uh, you know they uh, went the extra mile to ensure that uh, labor uh, you know all the important you know uh, people were protected uh, so uh, they went the extra mile even in ensuring that you know they got the vaccination done and so on and so forth so because of this confidence boosting measures uh, labor part of the uh, constraints went away i would think in, in covid 2 uh, but as of when we are discussing the issue now i would think the primary concern would be on the uh, and the uh, the export the demand side because of this uh, you know container related issues and uh, to some extent some msmes are still struggling with the funding uh, bankers are somewhat choosy in funding to these uh, companies so uh, companies which are doing well who uh, have a good the clean good track record with the banking system they are getting funding but companies who have you know uh, missed the payment uh, they are struggling to get uh, this year funding so that is where you know the other measures taken by the government as part, part of the atma nirbhar package uh, through you know by giving this uh, subordinated loan or equity infusion uh, through nsic so these are the measures uh, which are yet to percolate to the ground level 
So once uh, we see some traction on that, I believe MSMEs will be able to come out of this uh, slump in uh, in output. Thank you, Mr. Ravishanan. Personally, for me, I think uh, not many would realize it's the MSMEs uh, holding their labor back, caring for those people, which made a big difference in the second wave. First wave, of course, nobody knew when we were all caught unaware because bulk of the labor in this country is employed with MSMEs. And how they managed to hold these people in the second wave and take care of them was something, you know, like we, we need to feel proud of in, uh, in our industry. Thank you very much. And my next question is, of course, going to Mr. Arvind Goenka, Chairman of Tech Council. Growth has always been an, uh, kind of a, an issue over the past uh, few months uh, because we don't even talk of growth. We are talking about coming back to normalcy. And uh, contextually, currently, uh, Mr. Goenka, the, the arbitrage in both the polymer prices currently in the world, in Europe and US, uh, and the arbitrage in labor, of course, uh, in India, together, uh, how can MSMEs export more to get out of their current difficult situation? And uh, is, are there some suggestions from you, Mr. Arvind no, uh, thank you, Mr. Jair. This is a very important question because, I mean, uh, we'll need to clear some doubts here in, uh, in this panel. So before I begin, I just want to give you some figures so that we are uh, aware what we are talking about. So basically, India exports around $10 billion of uh, plastics annually, but its global share is just 1%. And uh, China's exports are 10 times more than uh, what India exports, or I think even more than 10 times. And India does not rank in the top 15 plastic exporting countries. And uh, exports of con smaller countries, like even like Malaysia, is more than uh, that of India. So, I mean, as regards your question, it is true that the polymer prices and labor costs in India are low as compared to the Western countries. But then the question is that why India is not exporting, you know, why we are not in the top export charts. So the factual situation is that apart from labor costs, all other costs are high in India. And if we talk about a typical export product, say 60% is the polymer cost and 40% is the other cost, which could include the labor, power, and logistics. So let's discuss you know, each of the costs uh, one by one. And if we talk about electric supply, the electric supply quality is not good in India for the industry. We have interruptions and fluctuations and the cost is also not low because there is a cross subsidy charged on the power to the industry. If we talk about logistic costs, again, because we are dependent on the road infrastructure, our costs are high. Although there is a lot of, in, uh, in, uh, lot of growth in the infrastructure coming off a road, but it's going to take time till the costs stabilize. Now, if we talk about the labor cost, so uh, we have to see what effect if that labor, the cheap labor cost has on the export product. And uh, can we actually get cheap labor to run our machines? So in my opinion, the trained industrial labor is available only near large cities or near industrial areas. But at that place, the land cost is very high, and which is a problem for the MSME industry. It may not be a problem for the large scale units, but for the MSME, expensive land is a issue because they have a limited budget and they have to, uh, you know, keep, keep uh, starting their unit in a limited uh, amount of finances. And uh, in a backward area, if a uh, MSME wants to set up his unit, he faces the problem of, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure. There is not proper infrastructure so that he can export his goods there. He is unable to retain uh, trained manpower in the backward areas. They all like to move to the uh, larger cities and industrial areas. As we have seen in the pandemic, you know, like we talk about, talk about migration right now. We have seen that uh, all the labor in the uh, industrial areas and large towns they have migrated back to villages. So nobody wants to stay in the villages. They all want to work and earn money in the, uh, in the large, uh, larger towns. So basically, an MSME unit who wants to uh, tap the export market, he has to set up his unit uh, near the industrial areas or near the major cities. And he has to pay for expensive land. And the cost of finance in India is so high that any benefit which, he, which India could derive out of uh, cheap labor gets negated by the high finance cost. So basically, cheap labor is not helping India in the present situation. But definitely, availability of abundant manpower will help India in the near future for sure. We will not have a dearth of labor, but you know, cheap labor is not helping right now. Now let's talk about the polymer cost. Like you said that uh, 
India's polymer cost is lower as compared to Western countries. I agree. But are we uh, lower as compared to China or the North East Asian countries? No, we are not. At least in the polymers, I know because I am also in this business that we are at least 15 to 20 percent higher as compared to prices prevailing in China and the other Asian countries. And uh, uh, the main reason for that is that India is a large importer of polymers, and uh, the Western countries know that. and they are offering at least 10 to 15% higher prices to india than what they can offer to china because they know that india has no other option than to import polymers so in case a msme is uh, wants to export his product he has to compete with the price which has been quoted by a chinese or a vietnamese or a malaysian uh, plastic processor i mean his raw material would not be compared with a manufacturer who is based out of europe or us so the polymer cost even though it is lower than europe or us it doesn't help him because he has to fight with the uh, you know exporters from china and northeast and that doesn't help so as you know india will will be having more polymer petrochemical complexes and higher polymer production the polymer cost could come down because we will not be import dependent and that could help so that is the reason that you know india is importing finished goods also worth 5 billion dollars we import polymers worth 10 billion dollars and uh, finished goods finished plastic goods worth 5 billion dollars because the plastic goods abroad are cheaper you know what we get in from china or vietnam they are cheaper than what what an indian producer can produce so these issues are there and uh, but i'm i'm quite confident that you know we will be having a good export growth already this year plex council has set a target of a 20% increase over 2019 levels and we feel that uh, government is supporting a lot to the industry and uh, the export will also uh, you know keep on increasing so i am very hopeful for the future but presently this is the situation thank you thank you very much going yourself so i think you made very important point that though the opportunities in europe and us exist our competition is with our asian neighbors which are big manufacturing hubs china is of course an elephant in the room and uh, even countries like malaysia are competing with us in processed goods but what's interesting the statistics you said 5 billion dollars of finished goods imports in india I and mean, this has also been always been one of the discussions which i have been having even with uh, the commerce ministry during our cep discussion that this is something which needs to be a little bit protected because these are jobs in india this 5 billion of finished goods actually mean a loss of jobs in india and i think you know this has been seriously taken by the commerce minister in do this thinking thank you very much and uh, uh, mr dugal saab uh, made an important uh, observation during his introduction that he is primarily in the automotive industry but he is now looking to go into other uh, white goods and consumer products uh, industry so my questions to you is actually in two parts sir the first part is of course for msmes in our sector which are the incentives today applicable and what more would the would our chemical industry sector need to recover from the pandemic maybe in the short term or in the medium term what additional uh, incentives do you have this is to you uh, so may i digress for what 30 seconds sure sir Uh, bring up something that affects a lot of us who are in our category uh msme is micro small medium enterprise when you take the last thing that is medium and that is where we come we get almost nothing from this msme and uh, during the pandemic and even before money is a huge issue for the others it is now stipulated that those who are msmes will get their payments in x number of days after supplying that doesn't apply to the medium scales we are left uh, you know to arrange our own finances at a fairly high cost and there is no provision for that so what is the point of you know of having a msme when the medium is not there so i thought this was in a forum to you know bring this up so oh, you made a very important point that there is a distinction between micro and small and the medium are not having the similar benefits of maybe supports in the support system 
And I think, you know, this is an important point. We need to bring it up to the stakeholders in the government that whatever we talk of, far less is applicable to the medium industries. And so we need to look at them also either separately or in a, in a comprehensive way. Thank you so much, sir. Many, many thanks. Many thanks. Now, the second thing is, uh, if I got your question right, the audio is not very clear here. Uh, the reason that we are now diversifying from the automobile industry into the wide goods industry is a lot of what the gentleman before uh, said, that there are issues with raw materials, there is uncertainty of supply. Sometimes materials are held up at ports or even at high seas. And we are left holding the baby that, you know, we get hauled up for delayed supplies or whatever. You know then how the industry works. So there has to be an active mechanism to make sure that the import and the logistics to where the plants are are absolutely smooth and there are no delays. Because again, delays mean money. So that is a big issue. Now in white goods, we will not be faced with this problem because we are not supplying GIT or whatever. So I can't tell you specifically to, to narrow down and on the incentives, you already said medium is not well covered into the MSME support system. Today for the medium industry maybe even the small ones. Are there any specific incentives you would look for or ask for or send a message to the government? Yes, sir. Definitely. Uh, I can't hear you very well. I hope you can hear me. Uh, the thing is that MSME has a dispute redressal system. That does not apply to the medium scale, sir. And this is very, very important, sir. Thank you very much, Dugal sir. I think Thank just you. one key message probably, you know, like I would personally, I assure you, I will personally take it to the government in every forum. And then- Many make thanks. Heard, yeah? Many thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, can I move and uh, ask Mr. Mukesh Diani a question that uh, there are, of course, we have been only hearing all over in the newspapers and every reports that there is a, lack of liquidity among the MSMEs uh, in general. The RBI has done something, the government is doing something, the banks on their own are doing something, but what must be done specifically to overcome this chronic issue? I would call it a chronic issue because I've been hearing it for 30 years and it, it's not changing. So may I ask your views on that, Mr. Biani? You know, on this part, I want to say only one point. The government, which uh, you can say the amount which is with the government in terms of GST, or you can say other facility, other products which we are supplying to the government, it should be released in a faster mode so that payment could get MSC faster and which can they use then in their business. That is the only thing which I can say for that part. And other thing, what Mr. Goenkash said regarding that point that 5 billion import is done for finished goods. Why? Mm -hmm. Reason behind that, ki India only wants to do trading. People in India don't want to take the challenge of manufacturing in India. Thank you very That's much. All. No, I, I think, you know, like you raised uh, uh, two points which are actually very vital. One is the government itself could help by releasing the funds of MSME in whichever forum they are holding, be it in GST credits or be it in any other form of refunds, that this should be done faster and that would help the liquidity to a lot extent uh, for these MSMEs. And the second one, of course, uh, you touched upon a point which is a big point is that uh, we are risk averse to take up more manufacturing. And uh, I'm just adding my views on that. And I've been seeing this actually in some forums that uh, why is this risk aversion is coming is not because we are not entrepreneurs. Our compliance burden is too high in manufacturing activity as compared to trading activity. 
And this somehow is tilting in favor of more trading rather than in manufacturing. But this is a very interesting point you made and uh, I thank you for that. And uh, I hope, you know, we will get these messages across that uh, we should make sure that the manufacturing compliances are not that complex and people are encouraged to manufacture. Thank you, Mr. Biani. Can I ask, uh, the, direct the next question to Mr. Rohit Kanuga from uh, Rukma Plastics and uh, we all know that you know innovation is very important. Uh, MSME sectors are always a little bit more challenged in uh, technology adoption or in innovation, and uh, and even funding capability for innovation because sometimes innovation needs a lot of money may end up with those results. So may I ask your view on how can MSMEs continue to to parallelly invest a little bit to stay ahead because the competition is global; it's not just local. And what will be, what should be the focus for MSMEs towards innovation? So, Mr. Rohit, this is up to you. Yeah. So, Mr. Janardhanan, I think you you hit the nail on the head uh, with the last question and this question when you said when you spoke about the liquidity issue in in MSME space and what Mr. Mukesh very rightly pointed out are the challenges being faced by the SMEs um, representing the polymer segment. Uh, you know, before I come to your point on the innovation aspect, which requires a lot of capital, if you see the MSME sector in the, poly in the polymer segment in the MSME uh, sector, in the last one and a half years, we have probably seen more volatility than probably the last decade. Our raw material prices for most of the commodity polymers have increased 20 to 50%. In many engineering polymers, up to a hundred percent increase in raw material prices. This apart, we are all aware of the delays due to uh, shipment delays, container shortages, increase in transport costs both locally and sea freight, and this has added on to a lot of stress for MSMEs uh, in the current times. Now, when a large or a mid-market client, you know, goes to a bank and tries to get his funding. The banks always look at his cash flows and also the collateral. Now, what's happening with a lot of the MSMEs and having spoken and uh, you know interacted with a lot of them, when we MSMEs go to the banks, it is primarily collateral driven, more collateral driven than cash flow driven. And this is where the last one and a half years has hit us. Because if you see the increase in the raw material prices, uh, the bank support has just not been there. And, uh, you know, I think this is one of the key reasons for the liquidity shortages in the last uh, one, one and a half years, especially. If you look at foreign countries also, a lot of financing to large companies and even to small companies is based on uh, the cash flow based financing. Bill discounting, factoring, reverse factoring, POS uh, uh, based factoring, POS based receivables. So based on that, we get our funding in other countries, but in India, you know, it's largely uh, collateral based. However, there have been changes in the last couple of years. Um, without taking too much time, I would like to mention about platforms such as Spread, which is a trade receivable discounting system, uh, which has been uh, available. Uh, there are three trades platforms which have now been available to MSMEs to be able to dis discount their receivables and get payments upfront. And this has been a great success story. However, the uh, utilization from the large companies is low. The government and the MSMEs need to push their buyers to get onto this platform and avail uh, this kind of a collateral free uh, funding for MSMEs. The government has recently also passed a factoring amendment bill, which will enable a lot of NDFCs to be part of these threads platforms. And I think that will open up a whole host of funding opportunities for, for MSMEs. I think with all these changes, uh, you know, as Mr. Mukesh pointed out, and um, uh, also the previous speakers pointed out, the government also needs to do its uh, a little bit of its bit with the CGT MSC scheme and the ELCGS scheme. The CGT MSC scheme, for instance, says that any MSME can get up to two crores of funding without collateral, and that is part of the trust given by the government. But if you see the utilization numbers for this financial year, for the last financial year. It was around, I think, 31,000 crores, which was down from 45,000 crores the previous year. So the government needs to work more closely with the banks and uh, enhance this process. Coming on to 
So this was the environment in which we are in. We are, of, of, of course, most of the MSMEs are going to be capital staffed because of the reasons I mentioned. If you look at the polymer sector, they say that the research and development spend is around 1%. If you look at the MSMEs, it would probably be in decimal points. You know, there are around 50,000 MSMEs in the, polymer, uh, in the polymer sector in India. And, you know, having spoken to the entire spectrum of the value chain, right from OEMs, ODMs, uh, processing companies, end user companies, FMCG companies, if I was to look at the entire value chain and spectrum, you see that the MSMEs have the least amount of innovation. Why does this happen? I think because a lot of them, you know, make in India, but do not conceptualize or try to develop in India. And I think that is very key. The thought process needs to change. Uh, you know, the, the companies, it's the company's owners on themselves to decide, you know, that they need to increase their spend budgetary spend towards innovation towards you know putting in a lot of thought process and manpower into it and once you decide that you know you, you need to increase your spend towards uh, towards a new product towards a new innovation have a budgetary allocation have the right rewards and recognition build an organization culture uh, that supports innovation i think that is is very key uh, the other thing that i see is the few opportunities uh, or a few themes which I feel MSMEs need to focus on uh, is one is the regulatory changes. Innovation happens, you know, when either you see there's a huge change in regulation or there is a change in consumer behavior or you get it on by process changes. If you see on the regulatory landscape in, in, in the chemical and the petrochemical sector, there is a huge shift towards phasing out of single-use plastics bringing in the uh, extended producer responsibility. So this will open up a huge array, array of opportunities for processors to look into biopolymers, for instance. You know, a lot of the commodities that we work on, you know, for packaging uh, would, would, would eventually get, get replaced by uh, bio-based solutions. And that's going to be a huge opportunity. Similarly, if you were to look at consumer trends, even now, even in India and uh, definitely overseas, you see that there is a huge demand for products which are sustainable. Now, pet bottle recycling, for instance, has been a huge success in India. You rarely would see a pet bottle lying around. And that's because the entire value chain is something which I feel Indian companies have innovated very well, right from picking up of the bottle, right to making the recycled flakes to polyester-based products. And now you, you, know, you see companies and startups which are even getting into recycled textiles or even shoes uh, to do that. So, uh, all this has been possible because of change in consumer behavior, which is demanding sustainable products. The other innovation, which I think is very key for MSMEs, uh, and this comes based on my discussion that I've had with leading OEMs and MNC companies, is that the reliance of Industry 4.0. A lot of SME companies feel that, okay, we have put in an ERP, and that's probably the, that's the, probably the max that we can go. But robotics, artificial intelligence, you know, getting all your uh, uh, getting all your production related data on the cloud is so important. Uh, you know, I, I have seen a few customers of ours who you know get all their quality data and CTQs, critical to quality parameters for their injection molded products on the cloud and share it with their customers, and that gives them an immense amount of confidence to the customers that each production batch is running successfully and very competently. So I think that these are some things, there is a lot of things that government needs to do, but there are a lot of things that are within the hands of the uh, MSMEs. The part, uh, I think that, you know, uh, the, the network or the nexus between education institutions, government institutions such as CIPET, EGFT, et cetera, and, and the industry, they need to come together and enhance the spend towards research. On the government side, uh, you know, the government does encourage large industries in big ways, such as the productivity linked incentive schemes. And that goes a big way towards promoting large industries. Uh, government should come up with schemes whereby they encourage MSMEs to invest in R&D, invest in innovative products by giving them tax breaks, by giving them extended depreciation, by giving them some kind of uh, rebates. And uh, I feel that that will uh, go a long way in uh, furthering uh, the progress towards uh, innovation. Uh, this apart, we have seen that in countries like China, 
uh, where you have clusters uh, you know, manufacturing a particular product, uh, be it molds, be it toys, be it stationery, I think the cluster concept is missing in India. And once government encourages the cluster concept, the government is already getting the PCPIR schemes in a very big way in India. But I think the traction of MSMEs in those, in those clusters needs to increase many fold. And once that happens, we will see a, a huge change. So these are some of my views on how companies can innovate. And uh, to answer your point, uh, uh, you know, of, again, on, on being capital scarf, I think it's upon the MSMEs to think a little differently uh, to, you know, probably also start evaluating being asset light. We have seen a lot of large companies, you know, trying to be asset light, cooperating with other companies, you know, trying to use leasing solutions and all that. And, uh, you know, the onus is on us to take up all these benefits and uh, that, you know, uh, the government and the uh, uh, the new age finance companies are coming on, be asset light and invest in innovation. Thank you, Rohit. That was awesome. So let me tell you what I learned uh, from some important point, which I take away actually is, uh, and I like the way you put it, you know, like it's more than make in India, it has to be conceptualized in India. And that involves right. the innovation. Yeah. Uh, just, just, just to add, uh, uh, I, I, I heard this somewhere, and I, a year back, and I think it's, it's, it's getting proven true today. They said that when COVID came, there would be a lot of opportunities, but people, uh, you know, underestimate, uh, you know, overestimate what happens in one year, and underestimate what can happen in ten years. And I see that happening. The number of companies which are interested to invest in India to make their molding solutions in India. Is, is going up tremendously. And, and COVID has shown that it can be a huge opportunity for innovation. Only thing is we need to tackle some of these liquidity-based issues and I'm sure MSMEs would grow like anything. Thank you. But I think important point is also that MSMEs need to prepare to, to receive industrial revolution for, I think it's more than uh, ERP systems or CRM systems. I just wanted to add something which uh, Rohit had spoken about, I think, uh, coming out of innovation and a collective spirit for the small and medium enterprises. It would be uh, very pertinent to, besides the cluster concept, where the small and medium enterprises, like in our association, we are promoting or trying to encourage, where centers of excellences can be created, which become probably the startup points for innovation to be there and the skill levels are available for people to tap into in terms of resources and uh, guidance and mentoring. So this is an important aspect where the small and medium enterprises would benefit and large enterprises could come forth and make it into a platform where uh, it encourages uh, the risk factor to be mitigated for the small and medium enterprises. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mark. One key message is that probably uh, we need to take carry this message to the government that the MSMEs need a little bit special attention in terms of uh, tax breaks, depreciation, and rebates only related to innovation and uh, thereby you know, encouraging the MSMEs to innovate more. So it need not be one brush for across the industry, but there has to be something here specifically. Okay, I will move on to, to, to Mr. Mokashi. He's also the chairman of Chemexil, uh, Chemical Export Council. So again, it was it's almost similar in nature to what I asked uh, Mr. Goenka. MSMEs need to grow, first of all, and that growth opportunity could be domestic, but also is export. And chemical industry export have been growing significantly over the last few years. And, uh, uh, specific to exports, we know, all know that the MEIS scheme has been uh, dropped and then the government has now introduced the RODTEP. What specific incentives within the RODTEP scope uh, can help MSMEs export more uh, from our sector? Uh, Mr. Mokashi, looking for your wisdom on this, please. Indian chemical industry is the sixth largest in the world and third largest in Asia. In this chemical industry, exports is, we have to given a target about $300 billion target from chemical exports from government of India. Out of that, you know, very interestingly, 47% of 
contributes from MSME. This 47% contribution is a very major contribution, and it has got a faster rate rate of growth than other than larger industries. See today, if you see the larger industries, they have many constraints. But for MSME, there is a less constraint because there are less number of uh, awards, and talents can improve. Talents can make lot of contribution to the their own uh, companies. So in this concern, the government has looked into some incentives. Actually, uh, the MEI scheme is not totally replacing. And they have not given the benefit what it was available with MEIS in the road tap. Road tap is given only for some extent relief, but not given the all the taxes which uh, the small medium enterprises paying. So there is a one of the we have taken up this issue with the government that whatever your percentage you have decided, right from they have decided 0.7 percent to the five uh, four and a half percent. Which is not enough for the what the government small industries are paying for that, and small industry overheads in the finance overhead is very high today. And as my colleague mentioned, the cluster concept has not started in India, and because all fragmented, they are all this all industries are in fragmented area. They do not have the infrastructure facilities, they do not have the road facilities, they do not have the shipping advantages, and if you if you see that constitute 67 percent of this MSME are only the manufacturing, and out of that micro small all is proprietary and partnership firms. So banks are not recognizing them the proprietary and for, uh, partnership firms. They only recognize the private limited, and they see their balance sheet. So it will what will happen? Even the person has a talent, and he can't grow. So these things and the government is also not supporting by giving the enough incentive to them, which we again and again we are raising this issue to the government. You please see that you make a cluster for a CZ cluster for only for uh, reserving for MSME for that. Today, if you see the EOU and CZ sectors are mainly constitutes only larger industries. So you have, if you give the SEZ uh, concept to only reserving for the small and medium industries, even micro industries, so that gives a lot of benefits. Today, China, China plus one, the concept today, if you see that after this COVID situation, the world has realized that there is only second source is India. Indian chemical industries are contributing very high, highly uh, specialized products. Today, which is, uh, specialty products, one of the uh, major uh, products which uh, segment in China. Today, China, if you see, they have specialty chemicals are largely in the worldwide this export. So India is only exporting the basic chemicals. So to bring back to the specialty chemicals, so we government has to give an incentive so that whatever the your world is looking for second source, India is a second source, and they trust on India. So that's why the way, uh, government has need to give attention, special attention, special zones, and for special finance and small industries to upgrade their technology. Government has to give the uh, concessional rate of interest for their finance. These are the very very uh, basic things and environmental issues. Small person goes to the environmental department, he will not be recognized. Only large industries are well be taken care of that. So see, we have to see that it is your child. So when the child has to grow, the government see, should see that, okay, you give an incentive to them. And you don't say that uh, they are only, uh, even proprietary companies are not important. They're very important. So today, if you see the startup companies, they have the very new concepts that are coming up. In such cases, we all, the government of India, we are, again and again, we are taking up these issues. But you know, it is a, a lot of uh, things uh, they also have to uh, give an uh, incentives. But still, we need they have the attention to the chemical industries and chemical industries. Once it is a given importance, so I think uh, we will be definitely we will replace the we will be not the second we will be the first in the world 
to support in the worldwide for exports. Because I will give one example in this. Today, we export castor oil, castor seeds to China. And China, what they make, the castor seeds, castor oil, and then make castor oil derivatives, which are very high, about five times, six times the valuated products. And they export back to India. And these are the small and industri medium industries. And if government is, we last, I think, 15 years, we are taking up with this issue with the industry. You don't allow the export to the castor oil and castor seeds. You allow us to upgrade the technology. You make give our uh, some funding to the universities, like China is giving. Chinese universities are making the preparing the technology and invention and giving back to the micro and medium industries. Similar way, our industries are not afford to uh, spend money on this uh, technology. So our university has to be well equipped to supply this technology to these industries. So these things we have to look into very uh, positively, then our MSME sector will not only 47%, I think we will grow about 60, 70% contribution we can do. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Since you mentioned uh, something which leads me into the next question, uh, you mentioned about the infrastructure of roads, clustering will help in place. So my next question goes to Mr. Nandan Agarwal on uh, uh, not just exports, even domestic movement of goods for MSMEs. Uh, logistics plays a very big role and uh, what logistic challenges are faced by MSMEs as a result? I know that uh, the GST kind of unified the market for us, uh, for the MSMEs in the whole country, but logistics is still a very big challenge. You know, like 20 years ago, they used to say that moving a product from Bombay to Calcutta is more expensive than shipping the product around the world once by sea. And I think it's still not very, very far off in the same scale. So maybe uh, we'd like to hear from you the logistics, which is a challenge for both exports and also to the same extent. Uh, while we wait for Mr. Nandar Agarwal, probably, you know, like uh, I'll, I'll try to, to get Mr. Vikram Marker because after logic I was coming, the human uh, resources, uh, the talent uh, in this industry is a very big topic. And... Uh, uh, Mr. Marker is also the, the, uh, the consolidated skilling uh, responsible for chemicals, plastics, and rubber industry. So, from from a skill point of view, uh, first of all, do we have enough skill for this MSME sectors in India? Uh, how can MSMEs uh, develop the skill they need to, from people uh, to support their own manufacturing? And what can the skill development councils, uh, which are uh, an apex body, how can they help the chemical industry, Mr. Martha? And I'll come Thank back you. to Mr. Nandan later. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah. So I think skilling, as you know, in India, is we are very nascent. And I think what the skill development councils are doing are doing a down-up structuring of uh, enhancing skills, certifying skills and uh, working closely with industry. So it's more government initiative with the industry uh, participants or stakeholders. And it's been enlarged from rubber to chemicals and petrochemicals to become now an enhanced body of the De Development Council. And uh, I think first we are initiating what you said to standardize the operational side, make SOPs which are very clean and clear, very simple to understand at ground ground level skill demand in our country, even if we have a conservative growth of six or eight percent uh, annualized is, is huge. Yeah. And we have a lot of people, but we also need the right skill. And I think that's going to be the next uh, imperative uh, focus of the government is to get the right skill for the job which is available. The pandemic has definitely taught all industries like our own industry and say the ARI as an association that dependence on as medium and small enterprises are dependencies. The pivots are very few or the fulcrums are very few. They're compact entrepreneur driven organization having very few top people all working at really highly responsible jobs. The pandemic has taught isolation, concerns of lack of travel that means uh, having proper succession planning, having 
clear reviews, uh, identifying what you said, talent in your earlier question, uh, identifying the talent and encouraging them to retain, grow and flower has become an imperative uh, need for the small and medium enterprises. I think we look at skill to grab from large organizations, say small and medium organizations normally in manufacturing, what my experience is, always have either their supply chain or and their customers both, which are much larger than them. And historically, that means they have access to processes, systems, review mechanisms, uh, identification of how to actually, uh, you know, reward and appreciate the talent which you have, because the outside is the best way for you to get recognition for the inside. So I encourage uh, in this time, at least we have been encouraging at ARI to go on to the virtual platform, encourage vendor meets on a broader cross-functional teams participating, having shared uh, goals, uh, problems, solutions, which are much more what you said at an enterprise level, because uh, small and medium enterprises are not enterprises, but they aim to become uh, uh, enterprises. Yeah. And uh, so for me, that this this has been a guiding force through the association, through the development council, as well as internally in the organization to encourage, to understand the shortcuts required to start looking as an enterprise. Yeah, Truly, the pandemic has taught that we must delegate, encourage the mid-level or the junior level to start skilling and be able to perform at the high level. Because the pandemic can paralyze you whichever way and it's unpredictable. And we are yet, yet partly in the COVID situation. So I think we have to take short term measures, like you said, and the question is pertinent for the small and medium enterprise. We cannot afford to keep hiring. We need to focus on identifying talent, retaining it and multi-scaling it by cross-functionality. So that's the mantra I think uh, most of the organizations are doing and the development council is helping the bottom side of workers and supervisors and up to close to manager levels to really be certified so that they at least know that they are having a quality which is otherwise in most of the small and medium organizations not even not even structured into their uh, job profile yeah so thank you i think i'm thank spoken you. a little bit broadly but i'm open to any more oh, you, questioning you, on that yeah you have a very important thought and a question to, to mr rajesh desai one end of course we are looking for skilled people to be hiring into the organization. Uh, but we all know that, you know, like these people need to be developed. They need to be trained. Big companies are very structured training. I still undergo training even now if I have to on some areas. Artificial intelligence for once, you know, like we all need to keep ourselves training. This is up. So from your point of view, how do MSMEs or what should they be doing? To, to, for continuous development of their employees. Once they are skilled and they are hired, over the next 20, 30 years, they need to be developed and trained uh, and adapting for new skills, new technologies. And what would be your thoughts on that and your suggestions? I just will focus on the plastic industry because I, I know more about it rather than uh, rubber and other industry. So I think capacity utilization of 50%, which is now in the plastic industry, we are uh, employing about 5 million people. Uh, that includes uh, uh, white collar, that includes blue collar, and uh, all these people. And if we increase uh, our utilization from 50% to 70% in uh, five to six years, uh, uh, sorry, three to five years, then we will require about 1.5 million additional workforce for Indian plastic industry. Uh, as you all were talking about, I think. Uh, Skill labor is going to be challenge like all other industry. It is challenge for the plastic industry already. Another challenge we are facing is that uh, the manpower what we are producing are not industry ready. Uh, our our uh, education structure and skilling structure is such that uh, they have to be industry ready. In the plastic industry, we have uh, many uh, institutes and associations who are leading their ways in training people and trying to fill up this gap. Uh, to start with uh, CPET, which is very well known uh, and having more than 46 centers throughout the country, uh, which was predominantly set up for skilling uh, and training the blue collar worker, now has also understood the requirement of industry and from last one decade, they have started uh, 
uh, engineering courses in processing of plastics, plastic design courses and tooling courses. Uh, this includes uh, graduate and postgraduate courses for uh, plastic industry. But this is not enough. Industry felt that this is not enough. And so uh, many associations realize this and they have come forward. For example, uh, Amtech Center, which was uh, uh, very recently set up by uh, All India Plastics. I think uh, Rohit is a part of it. He should be knowing about it. So uh, that's where we are. They are working and trying to bridge a gap between uh, uh, existing skill and how do they upgrade, orient them, or do the skilling for uh, people who are experienced 15, 20 years, and how to take them on the next level has been already started. Uh, this center has been established and opened, uh, I think, last year, and they are running uh, online or uh, virtual courses for upgrading uh, knowledge for uh, professionals in plastics in terms of technical knowledge and also orienting them towards management expertise, uh, so marketing, designing, and so on. Plus India Foundation is setting up a university, uh, which is with the US collaboration. And uh, they will be focusing on developing, uh, uh, the mission is to make industry ready professional in terms of engineering and management. This model is very successfully working overseas, and I think many of you may be aware of it. Plus, India just constructed the university when they were about to start, I think, high-speed rail has derailed the project for at least six months. They will be doing it. There is a post-graduation, graduation, post-graduation, post and PhD uh, kind of uh, things uh, which will be taught and uh, done there with a joint degree program. Uh, many industry associations, including uh, Plastic Machinery Manufacturer Association, they are also, they have come forward to train people uh, individually and collectively. So in field of extrusion, injection molding, blow molding, uh, some of the manufacturers are running the courses uh, to train uh, uh, individually, as well as the, as the association, they are working with the Plastic Processing Associations and they are doing it. So I think these are the kind of certain initiatives which are uh, taken by Indian plastic industry. The challenge is that in each sector, uh, the demand is different. So that's where uh, my suggestion is to make use of ITI who are doing the skilling and Indian plastic associations or uh, industry should tie with them, cluster with them and then see that their need is made. So for example, in Laman and other area, injection molding is more prevalent. In Ahmedabad and other area, extrusion is more prevalent. So depending upon the region, the demand is there, and we should be able to uh, work with this kind of uh, associate. I mean, uh, centers to uh, I mean uh, fill up our demand. One more suggestion is that uh, multinationals uh, like Sabik uh, or multinational who are into machine manufacturing, so raw material manufacturing and uh, machinery manufacturing, along with Indian PSU, should also uh, extend their hand to such kind of associations who are working in a skilling or uh, manpower development and their guidance their resource uh, contribution will definitely make a big change um, so that's for me as well it was a great suggestion uh, this is uh, I, uh, what i can <coughs> tell you is that uh, uh, from sabic our scientists our engineers and including myself i go to teach actually once a year for the teachers day and uh, we are open to send all our people to teach uh, in the honor of teachers so this year, we missed doing a physical one, but I did one earlier. So support is assured. I think, you know, sharing of knowledge from big companies, very good point you made. We need to institutionalize it rather than leave it to the passion of few people. Thank you so much. And uh, I would like to get back to Mr. Nandan uh, on the important issue of logistics, which is, a, which is actually a very big topic, but this becomes even more complex. So... Mr. Nandan, you, were, you started, and, uh, so would like to pose this question back to you, please, now. Sure. So, uh, just as the Indian economy, uh, which, you know, after a difficult 1920, was looking at a, you know, favorable 2021, and just, you know, when 2021 was about to begin, and, you know, COVID struck, and, you know, the lockdown struck, and which sort of disrupted the entire economy. Similarly, you know, I was about to speak, and the network got disrupted. And, uh, but, you know, as the economy sort of bounced back, you know, uh, very resiliently, you know, 
uh, post, you know, the first uh, wave, I would like to sort of, you know, take up this question with the same sort of, uh, you know, resilience and uh, so logistic challenges, you know, are being faced uh, and uh, it's uh, sort of uh, not seeing the, you know, end of tunnel, you know, uh, the container shortages, you know, have been spoken, you know, uh, during this discussion as well. And it's more than the shortage, it's more of an imbalance which has been created, you know, because of uh, uh, the pent up demand, you know, coming up from the mature economies, you know, post uh, the COVID uh, lockdowns. And uh, because of which uh, there have been delays in shipments, uh, you know, lower availability of, you know, vessels, uh, uh, the container freights, you know, have increased, you know, 10 to 15 fold over the last one and a half years. Uh, you know, what used to cost us about $300 per container, uh, uh, you know, from China, uh, which cost us about $3,000 to $3,500 uh, per container. So this has really affected, you know, the, uh, 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 the, uh, the cost economics of uh, MSMEs. And uh, MSMEs, you know, largely, you know, being, uh, you know, B2B players and, you know, they normally work on a cost plus uh, approach. Uh, with, you know, uh, the larger uh, uh, organizations, you know, who are the customers, you know, passing on these, you know, costs uh, on a real-time basis also, you know, uh, has uh, been a, you know, big challenge for most of the MSMEs. So there has always been a lag, you know, before, you know, they could, you know, pass on, you know, these uh, sort of cost increases. And uh, so when the cost increases, you know, are, uh, uh, you know, are, uh, uh, you know, manageable, you know, uh, it, you know, it's okay, you know, you, you know, even if there is a deferment uh, in getting those increases from your customers, it's okay. But when, you know, such sort of exponential uh, cost increases happen because of, you know, such events, uh, it becomes very difficult. So sustainability of the MSMEs, you know, in the, the absence of, you know, getting that uh, support from the larger, you know, customers becomes very difficult. On the other, on the other hand, you know, while we are facing, you know, challenges on the, you uh, on the exim front, there have been challenges on the domestic uh, logistics as well. Uh, during uh, the first uh, wave, there was a reverse migration which happened, and there was, uh, you know, uh, a complete, you know, scarcity of, uh, you know, drivers available. So almost, you know, fifty to sixty percent of the vehicles, you know, were off-roaded uh, because of the, you know, non-availability of uh, drivers. Uh, once, you know, uh, you know, the drivers, you know, started coming back there was an impact on the diesel prices, you know, because of the crude increase as well as the increase in the taxation by the government. Now, this also has caused, you know, uh, you know a tremendous increase in the, in the domestic uh, freight in the country. And uh, again, you know, uh, you know uh, the uh, lag in passing on the sort of freight increase of the customers, you know, is having, you know, sustainability, creating sustain sustainability issues. The delays in shipment as well as the lead times also is uh, making the MSMEs uh, carry more inventory. So earlier, if you know, uh, an MSMEs were working on sort of, you know, a minimum number of days of inventory. Now to ensure the availability, uh, the inventory requirement has increased, which is also, you know, given, uh, uh, you know, a big issue on, you know, the cash flow management. Uh, we've already discussed, you know, during this panel about, you know, the funding challenges, you know, being uh, faced by the MSMEs. And uh, so, you know, so topping those, you know, sort of, you know, uh, funding issues, you know, the need for higher inventory uh, because of the logistical uh, disruptions, you know, in the global economy have also created a lot of, you know, pressures uh, on the MSME. Uh, you know, from the point of view of, of our industry, you know, we manufacture diesel exhaust fluid, uh, which became mandatory to be used in all diesel engines, meeting the BS6 emission norms. So COVID came along with the transition of the, you know, Indian automotive industry from BS4 to BS6, which mandated the use, you know, of, you know, another fluid to meet the emission norms. Um, we being the pioneers and the market leaders in this segment, you know, it was very important for us to, you know, uh, ensure seamless supplies of this fluid. Otherwise, the global, the, the, the entire logistic industry would have come to a standstill. Um, um, so, you know, so, uh, you know, we, we ensured, you know, that all our plants, you know, sort of, you know, uh, uh, come back into operation, you know, due to the essential commodities, uh, uh, you know, very, very quickly, uh, we ensured that we take care of our workmen, uh, you know, and, and avoid the reverse migration during the COVID pandemic time. Um, again, on the raw material front, we ensured that we increase our inventory holding capacity by building up, you know, infrastructure, you know, to mitigate, you know, the uh, uh, the supply issues from the raw material side. Um, so, you know, we were able to ensure that, you know, adequate product is available to the uh, logistics industry uh, across the country. Um, and the such that the BS6 implementation also was not affected and uh, uh, the COVID, uh, you know, sort of challenges, you know, were uh, uh, were mitigated. Um, you know, today, I mean, while, you know, these challenges started like almost you know, eight to 10 months back, 
it was anticipated by the middle of you know uh, uh, 2021 you know uh, the supply chain issues you know should you know ease out uh, supplies definitely of key uh, uh, you know input materials you no know, key chemicals uh, uh, the supply situation has definitely improved uh, over the last couple of uh, months uh, but the shipping challenges uh, still persist uh, and uh, um, uh, you know uh, the delays of shipment you know still you know continue to happen um, I was I was you know uh, reading uh, an article somewhere and where it said that the container imbalance uh, could you know stay here you know uh, as long as you know middle of 2022. So there's still you know almost you know a year you know where we will be seeing high freight rates, we will be seeing uh, shipment delays. Um, so uh, it is it is imperative that the government supports the MSMEs you know uh, with with you know uh, more uh, uh, you know financing options you know and uh, with uh, the uh, uh, NBFC is going to have to look at the space, uh, uh, you know, as an opportunity, uh, you know, for uh, increasing their, uh, uh, you know, uh, their their advances and you know, uh, 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 their assets. So you know, so um, it's it's you know, you need to be like you know, I mean, when there's a problem, you know, there is an opportunity also which are you know which arises, and uh, it's, it's the right time to support the MSMEs, you know, for the future growth uh, of the country. Thank you. So. I think you know the point you important point you made is that normally logistic itself is a challenge, and then the BS6 came on top during this uh, wave two, and uh, to, to upgrade the logistics infrastructure. And I can tell you, I'm a user of your Aquas uh, AdBlue, and it's not easy. It's not yet available in the country, and and the newer vehicles will have to struggle. And uh, if, if more in transportation, uh, heavy vehicles are in. Uh, Changing over to BS six with the blue probably will get better. But the, the more important point is this container shortage is a is a global domino. It's not created by India, but India is just one peg in the domino, and we are facing the impact. So this, as you said, is likely to to go on for a little bit longer time, and that's only because the COVID wave is hitting different countries and continents at different times, and so that is creating an imbalance and getting stuck. They all need to get released. If the whole world was in shutdown for 45 days, probably it would have been simpler. But these are all coming at different times, and we see that in our business. So, thank you for that. And uh, I have one question, which is a little bit. Uh, first, I would like to, of course, address it to Mr. Samir. Uh, but after he has his view, probably others can also join. Uh, one of those, uh, let's say, uh, MSMEs are entrepreneur driven, and. Uh, how do they professionalize this first question and how do they plan succession planning because eventually i'm, I'm just speaking from uh, from my knowledge about the german middle stand which are msmes in germany uh, how do they professionalize and how do they uh, plan succession planning outside of the family these are questions you know which will ensure sustainability of the msmes so Mr. Samir, your thoughts on this, and then I will open it up to others to, to share. Hello, everyone. Uh, very interesting question. Uh, first of all, the professionalizing the business now, it's not an option anymore. We are seeing the industrial world around us, how fast and at what pace it is changing. And so it is now mandatory to consider your factory, your workplace, not just as a place, but I think more as a process, I would believe which has some input, some value addition is going on there and then output is there. So I was listening to thoughts of one of the great leaders of our time, this Elon Musk. He said this, that if you really want to, you know, do something, don't think that if you're busy whole day, you are doing the work. And also, you know, Bill Gates once uh, said that, very interesting, uh, he said that, you know, the toughest work, the toughest job I give to that employee of my company, whom I feel is the laziest. Why? Because, you know, that person will find the route to automate it or to do it in the least possible time. So I think, uh, you know, uh, if I talk about the professional, uh, professionalizing of a company, a lot of things uh, today are needed. First of all, that fear of losing the control. We, we are from MSME, we, you know, it is always there. Let us accept it that if we, you know, delegate, we want to keep everything in our control. But if we really want to grow, if we really want to contribute to this country, to this nation, the mindset of this notion, you know, needs to be changed. We should learn from others and we should, you know, listen to them 
in msms what happens mostly what i have realized is that you know we are not even open to transparent communication something is going in our head but we don't want our employees to know it exactly to some level it is fine but let us you know accept this thing that having a transparent environment communicating with your employees keeping our you know targets objectives in front of them and working collectively to achieve something it is this thing gives a lot of you know happiness relaxation and ultimately satisfaction somewhere so you know professionalizing now the world is changing at such a rapid pace since i am from the automotive i can you know share here few things that you know oems maruti is suzuki leader of indian market now we have seen that you know a lot of new players like kia motors like the mg motors they have entered the market and how the customers have embraced them i mean nobody has expected that the kia and mg would you know get such a huge reception in indian market so and also we are seeing that you know their sub suppliers are also now coming to the indian market and we being from automotive supply chain being a tier 2 supplier in this sector you know our challenge is now with those tier 2 suppliers who are you know at a very good level who understand the processes who knows you know whenever we think of an msme one word comes to our mind that is you know lala company so that lala l a l a that needs to be you know ch- somewhat changed nowadays that l a l a that l needs to be changed to lean manufacturing that you know msme needs to change their processes and get into the lean thing then we say a that a has to be now what i feel is automated our you know processes there should be formal control systems to you know track our processes their inputs and what their efficiency is then again if i talk about you know l a l then l i think it is a low cost for me there are so many different different automation solutions different softwares and so many you know solutions it is just you know going out in the market and finding the right one so but i think you know my father started out this company what now i am representing bp engineering in 1987 and i have realized this thing whatever i am discussing with on this platform i have myself have realized that you know my father was not you know able to was not willing to communicate all the things was not you know in a you know the mindset was like i cannot you know let that control go away from me that some egoistic things are there let us accept this so <laughs> i think yes professionalizing the business now it is something which is very important and uh, we should embrace technology you know as my colleagues have already mentioned cloud storage is there now you know electronic signatures are there for your documentation work and to make the things faster and so many different you know as sir uh, jr sir has already mentioned like the different erps so we should embrace it if we really want to grow and we should we are actually busy when we are not busy i mean we have time for these panel discussions then we are actually growing when we are sitting here having discussion and our company is running that is the real sme msme sector should work towards so i think uh, this is uh, what i really feel and uh, uh, and your next question uh, was i think related to succession planning you know uh, we went to japan and we saw there that you know there is a big problem and uh, the people were not getting their you know the children for succeeding so they you know what they do is they get some third person to run their company after their deaths and they get a very formal agreement done there and so but uh, fortunately or you know this problem is not uh, in india and uh, we should very openly you know have a clear strategy the show must go on this should be in our mind that uh, you know we let us accept this reality that one day you know everything will end but this company who for you know when we started this it was like a baby and we put our sweat on it you know we did everything to you know build it what it is so yes succession planning is should be there and it should be in a very structured manner and you know we all are human beings we make mistakes yes it's fine but let us just learn all through this process and you know uh the show must go on that's what i would say <laughs> but that's all from my side the show must go on and will go on thank you very much but my last question we are almost come to the end of our session is is open to all to answer and then we can go on uh, and this is very close to my heart and that's why i'm asking this question uh, sustainability is something you know we need to do not for our generation but we need to ne- do it for the next generation and uh, how are msmes embracing this contributing it maybe in some ways uh, uh, having a solar or zero discharge or reducing their emissions whichever way it's a combination or using some bio products uh, it's a combination of many things but 
the, the, the concept of embracing sustainability and what's the role MSME should play? I think larger companies are structured, they have a vision for a period of time, but I know that smaller companies are struggling with this because they need to take care. So how do we embrace sustainability? And it's open to all. Uh, let me start with Mr. Mokashi because he is in the business of bioproducts and then all of you can add your views uh, before we conclude. Mr. Mokashi, sir. See, sustainability is uh, one the who has got an interest to make uh, the waste products into the valuable products. So that is very, very important that one should have in mind. And uh, when the person thought of oh, his, com his company has some byproducts, suppose. So to, you, how to use the byproducts and make not to just to make the waste, it has to be used in the reuse. So and make the value addition in that. That in that direction, technology is very important. And in, in such case, he has to adapt and he has to bring, develop the new small technologies, which makes the uh, sustainable products is uh, again and again reprocessing. Uh, example I can give you in the, in India, the sugar, there are 400 plus sugar companies and they generate a lot of uh, bagas, waste, and the mud they generate. What our company has done, they say, since it is a larger company, we make use of every product into the valuable products. We use bagas not for burning that uh, people use to burn and make the uh, this uh, electricity, but in one step ahead, what we do, we make the, some some the cellulose. It is very different technology, a very high technology, and we make use of the bagasse to the uh, uh, the cellulose products. So cellulose, then there are a lot of derivatives comes from the derivative, and the mud which comes from the uh, cane, and we make use of bio fertilizer. We do that. And from the mud, there is a lot small uh, way of them uh, uh, wax inside. So that we remove, refine and remove. That is called a sugarcane wax. So see that just way, throwing that mud, you can throw it to the uh, field. But we generate, we, we extract all these uh, value addition product, value added products. So such kind of uh, concepts. Now the even India uh, is very talented. People have very, everybody has their own talent and they should come out with such uh, ideas and small and medium enterprises and the other companies should support to this. Like the, even this, like Sabik, BSF, they should allow some of this uh, new small enterprises to support these to uh, make it happen. So it is uh, my idea. Anybody else on sustainability? Yeah. Would you like to add your views? Yeah, as far as... Uh... Sustainability goes. I think uh, you know there, there there are various ways companies can do it. So one is definitely on the process side uh, by getting into energy efficient machines, which I've seen a lot of uh, you know companies in injection molding especially are getting into. So that is a great way. The secondly on the product side, uh, there is a lot of acceptability from customers today. So earlier you know things like sustainability maybe a few years back would have just been called a buzzword. But today, there is an acceptability from a lot of customers towards end customers towards uh, sustainable products. There are a lot of OEMs and MNC companies which actually uh, have, uh, you know, signed up, for example, with United Nations sustainability goals that, you know, by uh, this year, you know, we will be 25% green product or 30% green product. And they are actually looking or would appreciate their entire value chain and their uh, partners to also you know, join the bandwagon and, you know, use these materials. So there is a scope for companies to innovate as far as their process goes and also as far as materials goes. In plastics, there is a huge opportunity to use recycled materials and uh, bio-based materials and green materials towards this. And I think a lot of us MSMEs can uh, try to, you know, look at these green certifications, uh, you know, which would... Uh, work with partners, uh, you know, offering these certifications to help us enlist, you know, what are the various aspects of the process which, which need to be uh, green. And this uh, coupled with the fact that, you know, industry getting into, uh, uh, you know, higher level of automation would then help us to keep the right records because going forward, everything, you know, in production uh, with the larger companies is going to be on a blockchain, which is going to get tracked across the system. Let me, let me add uh, some color from the capital market perspective. You know, of late, ESG is one theme which you know which reverberates well with the you know uh, lenders and investors. 
uh, but a lot of money is flowing into uh, chemical companies these days. But I've never seen this kind of buoyancy in my, you know, uh, almost two and a half decade career watching chemical companies. So huge amount of interest, and within that, there is good, uh, you know, differentiation among companies who have good governance systems. You know, uh, companies who have very, good, very laid, little laid out environmental management system. Uh, you know, who have good, uh, you know, uh, uh, board structure, uh, independence of the board and uh, who follow sustainable practices while there may be cost attached to uh, you know adhering to all these guidelines you know the you know rewards are also fairly uh, good these days upside potentially is huge if you follow good uh, esg practices so in that regard while uh, it could be a short term pain but uh, it's certainly a long it's going to be a long term gain for the industry so that is something uh, companies should not be ignoring uh, i would think uh, you know uh, from the way, from the way i see it can i can I contribute, uh, Jamanadhan ji? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. I just also would like to share on the platform that sustainability, A, as a manufacturing enterprise, the way we look at it is from a product, you move to a solution provider. So that means you go into understanding the end use, optimize it for your end user. And uh, so the path then becomes self-checking and self-creating uh, where you become very strongly partner with the end user chain then obviously we in a thermoset polymer environment which rubber is we look at how how, how to have end use extension of life uh, say in a product like conveyor belting we look at light weighting energy efficiency we look at packaging to be reduced from wood to recyclable packaging which be plastic or metal so i think it's uh, it's a pathway you go for internal mastery in reducing wastage, optimizing process, enhancing skills, as well as using your end customer as being the best educator to know what the performance benefits he is desiring and setting goals or benchmarks which are much higher in an organization. So to just sum it up, that's the way I would look at sustainability. It's a very wide question, but specifically to manufacturing and MSME, these would be the per pertaining mantra points which I would like to put forward yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, I would also like to add one point. See, Please, see right now, you know, the definition for MSME has been widened, you know, recently. But say if you talk about uh, factories, you know, which are having a turnover of, say, um, up to 100 crores. Now, these kind of units are just managing their end, you know, and if you ask them to invest money into sustainable solutions or to uh, use recycled products or to make use of their waste product, like Mr. Mokashi said, then it needs investment, you know, and uh, they would not be able to do it themselves. So here, I would suggest that, you know, government should extend some support to these kind of units that if they are able to, if, if they're able to have a sustainable, sustainable solution, then they should get some kind of a cash support from government, just as an encouragement to begin with. And later on, it could be withdrawn. But without any, you know, cash support, I feel that it will be very difficult for them to, uh, you know, by, by themselves to enter into this and uh, you know uh, and and to and, and to do this yeah that's I think yeah. Yeah, that's why I told uh, a Sabik and company like is basic base and all they should support because they are they are cash rich companies in the world <laughs> and, and, I, and I can only assure you that you know like for Sabik sustainability is part of our strategy it's in yeah, I know. our strategy. And uh, we are running the largest carbon capture unit, commercial unit uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the world. Close to half a million uh, tons per year, uh, we can capture and reuse it. And Great. Methanol and uh, or even in carbonated drinks. So this is some long journey. I was just looking to see, you know, like MSMEs need to, to start to embrace this because they will also get measured by this index. It's not an index they are measured right now, but this will come soon. Thank you. It was a great pleasure, you know, like moderating this session with so many smart and wise people. I personally am very enriched at the end of this session. I hope you also all enjoyed. And uh, thank you so much. Stay safe. And uh, my personal thanks again to all of you. Namaskar. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Janardhanan, for moderating the dialogue with our subject matter experts today. Clearly, the discussion highlighted challenges, opportunities, and the collaboration required to derive the way forward very well. On behalf of ET Energy World and Sabic, I thank our panelists today.
for sharing their valuable point of view. We hope our viewers found the discussion to be insightful. Please continue to share your takeaways and highlights from the event on social media using the hashtag Championing India. On that note, I now invite Mr. Arvind Mehta, Chairman AIPMA, Governing Council to share his concluding remarks to mark the closing of the event. Welcome, Mr. Mehta. Thank you, ET team. And uh, it is a, always a pleasure to talk to the press or magazine or anybody. And uh, welcome to the plastic industry viewpoints from the MSME. That is what I'm told to speak about. So most welcome. MSME plays a very, very important role in employment generation. As usual in other sector, this plastic sector also. Exports and skill development, they are exporting as well as the skill development also, they make it, they do it rather. Plastic industry in India consists of around 50,000 processing units, 95% are in MSME. That is the beauty of this sector, that whatever you see overall, and that is uh, what you call around 50,000 units of course, small like that medium and larger few, they are uh, uh, spread across the country including the recycling one, that is the story. Size of the plastic industry is around, say, more than 5 lakh crore, something like that in, in terms of rupees. And uh, one uh, this 4.6, we are giving the million appointed, um, this uh, whatever employment we are giving to the people, that is 4.6 million people directly or indirectly, they are given the employment by the plastic industry of India. See, we have the, what you call uh, polymers, always uh, what you call production is going up and that is helping the growth also. So in 2010, we had 8.5 million tons of polymer produced in locally in India. Then 2020, it was around 16.5 million tons. 2025, it is expected to, to be 23.5. And in the 2030, it will be around 32 million tons. So there is a healthy, what you call expansion in the polymer plants and our industry is, is catching up with it and there is a growth. You see the around 12% growth is there for the converting industry. No doubt Corona has uh, uh, what you call uh, hit the industry to a large extent, but our certain sectors are, are booming and that is what our silver lining is. Now, the water the plastic industry has faced a major crisis and there was a demand destruction during these two years that means covid years and apart from some segments like pharma healthcare food, food processing all other segments have seen the negative growth however with the opening of the economy post second wave the industry is growing and doing much better you see we served in the first half that is first covid wave with the expansion in the packaging industry. And there was a very big, big achievement for us. You, you called it this PPE kits and all that, which earlier we were importing, basically made out of the non one uh, polypropylene. And now we are exporting. That is the status of the, our plastic industry. Very, very vibrant industry. And they can match up, uh, match up the demand. This is a story as well. That is because they are flexible. They are in MSME. However, raw material prices has increased by 30 to 150 percent. This is our minus point. Have resulted in eroding major working capital for MSME. This has been a major roadblock for MSMEs. So, whatever the po polymer prices have gone up, that is from the pocket of the industry. And there, the MSME has a uh, limited funds, so they are affected more. Availability again as far as the export, uh, uh, this uh, market is concerned, currently there is a huge shortage of the containers. So we are not able to export at the price. That means gradually we are becoming little incompetitive because of the this containers, non-availability of the containers. One of the biggest challenge MSME in India is facing is lack of finance. This is the truth and truth and truth. <laughs> people say 
that funds are available, banks are giving, this is giving, this is giving. But every, there is always a catch with the banks, catch with the MSME loans or anything, whatever. See, in COVID, other countries just like Germany, Italy or America, they gave the grant. They gave the grant. Our government gave us the loan, MSME loan, that too with the, what you call uh, normal terms and conditions and with the interest. So this is one of the, no doubt, they helped us out and something 10% of your uh, working capital, they gave, gave the same rate and all that. But it is a loan. It is not a this one. No doubt. We had the loss because we closed down our factory and everything. But that, uh, that is not considered on that line. But it is uh, just like giving a loan that is we are doing. And everybody is uh, on that line. So we can't help it. Banks, they give once in a year. And they are no doubt goody goody always in the talk. They are, they are always uh, what you call uh, extremely good. Again, when the balance sheet comes, once in a year, balance sheet is there. They compare it with the top most of the what you call uh, industry. They compare it with uh, <laughs> something like a corporate uh, balance sheet, and uh, we are we face the music. So this is a story. There there has to be some change of thought as far as the MSMEs are concerned. No doubt, our government is very very serious on their part. We are thankful to them, but banks are banks, and they go accordingly. They even take the personal guarantee of the people, and that is uh, some some many. Thing, things what we call okay, it is easy, but it is not that easy. So th this is the thing. One of the this one. The other thing what we are facing is the it is a MSME now no doubt growing. They are family concern or they are one man show or something like that. So they have a challenge of the manage management also. See managerial skills and everything the entrepreneur has. So he does it. So he he sets it and everything. But it is a challenge. So there is needs to be something, some support for them to upgrade their uh, company and like that. Uh, this, this is the what we actually require. Now, again, there are technological problems also. That is uh, improper product development. That is also an issue. Poor product promotion. That is also an issue. And uh, this is the and They have to stand with the competition. So this is also an issue. <laughs> So as far as the management is concerned, MS, MSME hardly get any professional exposure to management practices in marketing, distribution, branding, or production. These are one of the weak points, rather, I would call it. But no doubt, every, the things are changing. And I would call it that this uh, COVID and this uh, virtual conferences, virtual meetings are helping uh, much because on that line, we are able to gather topmost in on this uh, platform technological platform and we get the input so that is a plus point for the of the covid i would call it on that line but this is a fact of the life that msme needs these 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 things that is management and professional exposure technological exposure and all that so we have to what you call make them uh, incentivize or motivate them for the job and they should be free to do that. Free means because they are limited resources. So they should be promoted at their by going to their factory or something or on the online courses or something by which they, they get the benefit. Our association, that is the All India Plastics Manufacturer Association, have started one vertical in the next building of ours in Mumbai that is called MTech, IPMA Management and Technology Entrepreneur Center. So we will be addressing these issues of the management as well as the technology that is our initiative. So we are trying to do that. We have signed MOU with the many multinationals also, and we are trying to do it. We have the second house uh, next to our uh, this uh, IPMA house. So there are independent building. So we are going ahead on that line. Now the skill manpower is the back backbone of everything. The growth, whatever we call it, five trillion economy, we call it that we would like to grow, but we need the tra trained or talented manpower. So this is the point we are uh, trying to address. No doubt, CPET and other, other people are there, they are addressing, but in a structured way, what industry wants and what we can correct that we are doing. So this will be one of the inconsistent things we are addressing. Where is expected in the next few years for the plastic industry? What is the future? Amid negative perception related to consumption of single-use plastics, 
and a recent notification on SUP. COVID-19 has highlighted the importance of SUP in the health and safety of human beings during these extremely challenging times. See, we blame plastics, everything, but all the structure, all this, everything is supported by single-use plastics only, that is PP kits, or you call it anything. So that is the severe on the on the line from the COVID. But it is a, the government has decided to ban certain things, single-use plastics, and we agree for it. There is no doubt about it. We are in negotiation with the government, and we we will work out the way by which government is satisfied as well as our growth continues. This is the, our point. So with more focus on health, safety, and uh, hygiene, plastic packaging segment is likely to see a faster growth. This is our, our assumption. Additionally, PE, PP, PVC, polystyrene, polycarbonate are used for multitude of medical applications. This would continue to see a faster growth. I had written one article on medical plastics and everything just now. And uh, you will wonder that how many, how many products, you see more than 50 products are there in the operation theater of made of plastics. And this is the savior of the mankind and this is a threat also. So plastic should be seen from that angle that it is a savior, it is supporting and it is supporting the what you call cause of the industry, it is supporting employment, it is supporting the economy, it is supporting GDP growth. So demand in other segments like automobile, infrastructure, electrical and electronics would see a growth in a medium term. All life is incomplete without plastics and we see that whatever the revolution we are getting just now, IT revolution, whatever, but backbone is plastics. You will see these electrical automobile cars which are coming now, incoming or has come, arrived now. So majority of the plastics uh, parts are there inside and more plastic is used because it is it makes the car lighter. So we get more, more mileages and everything. So this will be the, our point that there is a tremendous, there will be a tremendous growth in future once the things are settled. So just now the because of the COVID and everything, the because what happens that our our consumer industry they they sell the goods, but when the lockdown is there, the shops are closed, malls are closed, they cannot sell it. So there is a what is depletion in that market. But packaging and everything is okay. So once the everything normalizes. The thing should work. Our machinery people, they are, they are uh, fantastically booked. They are booked for a good time and uh, they have growth in, in their uh, this one. The, the exports are quite good. Exports all over the world, our, our uh, what you call products are highly appreciated. There is no complaint. It is made in India is also quite uh, taken as a correct uh, what you call product. So here there is nothing, nothing which can stop the plastic industry. But we need the handholding from the government of India. Basically, on the government is there, banks and everybody, finance, lubrication of finance, and, and without any hassle. The compliance is what we are supposed to do in GST. We no doubt we are doing. We are happy with GST. But a lot of compliances are also there. That we, we This compliance still needs to be reduced. So that will be the this one. So my point will be that we have four E initiatives which government of uh, MSME, rather government of India has told us, enterprise creation, employment generation, export and ease of doing business, that is the government point. And we look at it in a, that level. The initiative will also help MSME to export directly to global markets. There is simultaneous scope to promote larger enterprises with MSME. Industrial growth cannot happen in a vacuum unless there is a way to promote larger enterprises along with MSMEs. So, sir, we have the growth potential here. There is a enthusiasm all across the country for the plastic processing industry, no doubt, that first generation, second generation are there. But to encourage the, the what you call third generation or whatever, it should be what you call rather easy, hassle-free, and the things will be there. We are partner to the progress. We are partner to the 5 trillion economy, or Modi sahib as you say, and we will work out our best. That is what uh, MSME's point and uh, uh, we look at. Uh, we are thankful to Sabik initiative along with the Economic Times. 
and uh, this is a great uh, opportunity to MSME that you are able to address our point that of the MSME. Sabik is a wonderful company. I I was a what you call uh, I am his uh, their customer rather, but uh, they are a forward looking company. Forward looking means uh, they know, need they know the pulse of the industry in India, and uh, we are thankful to them. Sabik has done a wonderful job, and uh, they are our friends also. As well as the Economic Times, which is uh, what you torch bearer of the India's uh, what you call economic uh, uh, center, rather no center, economic no center, and thankful to Economic Times, they are they are wonderful people, and uh, I not I but most of the business people they prefer Economic Times, and uh, without that the day doesn't start. So thank you very much, Sabik. Thank you very much, Economic Times, and uh, MSME of India, Plastic Industry of India is highly thankful that you put our points in a right way and we are with you we are for the growth thank you thanks a lot thank you mr mehta for your time and very relevant comments once again on behalf of et energy world and sabik would like to thank all the speakers for gracing our event with your presence today your inputs and subject matter knowledge made the purpose of this forum successful my special thanks to our audience for being here today Finally, my gratitude to the leadership team at Sabic for organizing this dialogue on a topic so relevant to the MSMEs within the Indian chemical industry. Once again, thank you to all of you. Take good care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and keep the engagements on social media alive by using the hashtag championingIndia. <laughs>